uh, when we talk about this, uh, uh, the circular economy, we, we try to talk about um, an inclusive circular economy, uh, which means we not only try to look at how the circular economy can address issues around waste and resource efficiency, but also how the circular economy can be used to address issues around working conditions, social inclusion, um, and in the SDG context, also uh, addressing issues of, of poverty reduction. Um, and in terms of financing um, for this presentation, I'll, as I mentioned, run through the paper that we published, but I was also aiming to talk a little bit about um, uh, finance taxonomies and in the specific context, what's happening in, in the EU. Um, the reason for this is that we see these uh, taxonomies that are being developed as, as really important um, frameworks uh, that will also um, be needed to accelerate investments into circular models. Um, in terms of the report that we published, um, so here, here are some of the key messages. Um, so we found that circular economy finance becoming more sophisticated. Um, more and more companies are adopting it, um, especially because there's uh, increasing pressure and demand from uh, shareholders. Not only shareholders, but also stakeholders. Um, we took this photo of Extinction Rebellion in front of the Bank of England. Um, uh, yeah, there's increasing pressure on the financial sector to really shift towards sustainability, not only uh, for net zero, but also addressing other environmental issues. Um, and another finding that we also um, covered in the report is the issues um, of um, policy instruments. Policy is really important um, to shift um, finance uh, investments, especially because circular economy is still considered um, high risk investments. So what's needed to increase investor confidence are policies that are supportive. Um, and these can include uh, national action plans or targets on resource efficiency or waste reduction, um, extended producer responsibility, various uh, taxation me uh, measures or other uh, uh, economic incentives can also be useful. Um, we also found that Currently, most investments into circular economy go into high income countries. Um, then what we try to emphasize is that we also need to have uh, investments um, going into low and middle income countries, which is uh, important not only uh, for SDGs, but also for COVID recovery. And since then, actually, we've seen that many of the large multilateral development banks have have started including circular economy into their programs. Um, yes, we, we also make the point of uh, including issues around just transitions. We know just transitions uh, from the energy transition, but it will be also important for the uh, circular economy transition. And, and finally, um, as I mentioned, so green taxonomies are really good opportunity uh, to create binding and commonly adopted financial standards and, and guidelines for circular economy investments. Um, so we tried also to quantify uh, overall how much circular economy uh, finance is compared to the overall um, investment situation. Here's some figures that you see. So we estimated, and, and I need to say these are estimates because data is still very poor. Um, especially the data that is publicly available. Um, and we need to improve this uh, situation about, about data uh, across the board for circular economy. So um, we split this according to government, uh, then trying to include some of the stimulus packages, corporate spending, and then um, uh, the financial sector. And as you see, um, so corporate and, and governments um, make the main share in total about 1.5 trillion over the period 2019-2020, um, which sounds a lot, but if we look at this um, in the overall government spending or corporate spending, it's still very um, little. So if we really want to shift from a linear to a circular system, uh, we also need to shift the finance. 
Uh, we've looked at some of the available sustainable finance instruments that we have, the uh, green bonds, transition bonds, sustainability-linked sustainability bonds and bonds and ESG investing, and, and how far they're relevant for the circular economy. And there's various aspects which is already emerging that we can see. Um, so these are very good um, developments. Uh, and depending on the sector and um, different um, financial instruments might be more suitable. Um, I, will, I will go through this more quickly um, because of time, I think. Um, so we also, also try to understand where does circular investment go and the majority goes into uh, circular, uh, circular business models, more than 60%. Um, and, and what does that actually mean, circular business models? Um, that that uh, covers investments in, in companies that want to transition uh, to more circular activities um, or uh, that want to create new circular technologies or products. So that doesn't necessarily mean that all these businesses are already fully circular, but they are on a transition journey from a linear to a, to a circular model. And then there's these other areas here in, in terms of um, resource efficiency and infrastructure. Um, so some on plastics factoring and waste and recycling. Uh, in terms of the SDGs, we also try to understand the link between different uh, finance mechanisms that exist um, and how these could be leveraged uh, for various circular economy solutions that some of this would be heard about in previous pre presentations and other links to the SDGs. Um, so there's a number of um, important uh, mechanisms that could be used. And uh, maybe one, one thing to highlight is uh, the role of uh, public blended finance um, seems to be quite, uh, quite important. Again, this is the de-risking factor. Um, if government can provide um, uh, some um, public finance uh, to leverage then private investment and, and um, reduce the risks for, for the private sector to invest in these models. Um, th this seems to be a very um, important way forward at this stage. Um, we've tried to also understand the finance around renewable energy and how to integrate circularity into uh, renewable energy finance. Um, one reason for this is because the renew new renewable energy sector is currently being developed based on linear mindset without considerations of the waste steps generated um, uh, further down the line, um, plus also the risks of um, the resource intensity of, of the energy transition. So uh, a wide range of new materials and metals will be needed um, as we phase out uh, fossil fuel um, <coughs> power generation and um, the opportunities um, to include circularity in, in this um, system um, and also in this slide here uh, taking it from a risk perspective again um, uh, to create also these circular solutions to reduce financial risks and create actually also new, new business opportunities for um, uh, additional uh, value chains around uh, renewable energy technologies. So then um, coming to the taxonomy, um, so this is currently happening in the EU, but not only, uh, many other countries as well, as including um, the ASEAN also has a, a taxonomy that was launched end of last year. And um, the purpose of this taxonomy is to uh, really guide the financial sector towards more sustainable um, investment decisions. Um, and in the EU, it's specifically linked to the circular economy. Uh, here's a brief timeline. So it's been under development for quite a while. And um, so we already towards the implementation process. Uh, so it will be fully operational by 2023. Um, and so from this year, what started uh, are the climate objectives. They are the priority, but then all the other environmental objectives will also be become relevant in uh, 2023. Um, 
So it will affect a range of actors, including um, companies, the financial market uh, participants, uh, but also the public sector. And this is uh, what I mentioned here with the environmental objectives. So there's six of those. And um, you can see the transition to a circular economy is one of those um, six objectives. Uh, although obviously um, the transition, the circular economy will also have benefits for pollution prevention and control, but also for climate mitigation, um, as well as uh, protecting marine uh, resources. So they are, um, these are not necessarily separate uh, objectives, but interconnected. And um, maybe moving forward, there's these, uh, this is um, how specific criteria uh, are being de developed, starting with the environmental objective, then looking at economic sectors um, and, and uh, activities, then identifying uh, the types of substantial contribution uh, uh, to the objective. Um, uh, points of reference and then the uh, specific criteria. So this is uh, quite a technical process um, the taxonomy is going through. Um, and yeah, the overall, maybe the overall goal to mention here, um, the circular economy especially contributes to these, um, uh, especially the, the aim to reduce uh, used material footprint by 50% by 2030 and 75% by 2050. Um, so uh, there's an objective also on the uh, circular material use rate of all materials. Um, and uh, so yes, basically having set, set these high level targets uh, means it ne then becomes important to identify which investments uh, contribute to this um, or not. Um, here's a good model of the circular economy that's uh, used in, in the uh, context of the um, of the taxonomy. Uh, it's looking at circular design models, optimal use models, value recovery models, and circular support models. Um, then he, this is how the specific circularity criteria are, are being selected. Um, this is uh, overview of how the substantial contribution to the transition to circular economy is, is being looked at either through the on performance by reducing environmental pressures and you have um, um, from this slide these top three uh, categories are uh, looked at here and then um, enabling activities uh, basically circular, uh, circular support models which is, includes also um, issues around uh, providing uh, better data on uh, resource use and, and waste flows, et cetera. Um, I won't go into detail here, but uh, these are, this is a very detailed list about um, the substantial contributions, uh, what classifies as an activity uh, that falls under this uh, um, classification. Um, this is the second slide of this, um, with more, with a wider list. And um, again, too much to go through at the moment, uh, but if the PowerPoint can be shared later. Um, uh, so these are quite important um, subcategories of, of what can be, um, can be used. And then finally, this is my last slide. Uh, so the important thing um, for international cooperation um, and, and this was highlighted again previously, how, how important international co collaboration is for the circular economy, uh, is the alignment between different taxonomies. So the EU's uh, taxonomy is not the only one. Uh, the UK is actually now also looking at um, a, a, a sustainable finance taxonomy, but um, there's also one uh, that's being developed in China, but as I mentioned also the ASEAN taxonomy from November 2021. 20, uh, um, so, uh, this is an ongoing process and um, hopefully in this context, there can be closer dialogue and cooperation between um, APEC, ASEAN and, and Europe uh, on the circular economy finance, but 
generally more widely on circular economy policy exchanges and uh, and other issues around trade as well. So um, that's all for me. Um, if you have any questions, this is my email. You can uh, write to me and um, feel free to download the report. I, I hope you find that useful.